<laughs> okay, so hello and welcome to this latest edition of the Virtual Bridge Sessions. And today we're on an exciting topic. Well, for me, um, as well as me discovering that Zoom now has virtual virtual eyebrows and, and um, beards, which I'm really excited about, but I'm easily distracted. Today we're talking about assessment, um, which is great. I love assessment. It's a strange obsession, I know. <laughs> and who better to talk about it in, in my dual sort of interests of digital technology and assessment than Derek today, because uh, Derek McFarlane is joining us from SQA to talk about solar the dedicated online assessment platform. Something I feel, I feel that should be maybe slightly further ahead than it actually is, but it has so much potential and is perfect for our time. So Derek, share your story. Tell us about Solar and okay. where it's going. Uh, in essence, yes, as, as Kenji suggests, we would have hoped to have been in a better position by this point in time. However, rather like a, you know, a marathon runner who's run 22 miles, suddenly being told that the road's closed, please go back to the start and try again. Uh, we've had to revisit, obviously, what we're actually doing in our application. So essentially, this is to try and promote all the things that we have done, all the things that we are about to do, and the future journey as well for solar. So in essence, uh, unfortunately, the previous version was actually Flash based. And as many people will now know, Adobe decided to kill Flash at the end of last year. So that gave us a, a rather considerable headache uh, in dealing with that. But we're now moving towards HTML. We're now in a decent position where we can actually move all or, or near enough all of our content to the HTML uh, system and essentially to try and promote the benefits of those types of things and what we're also looking for in terms of engagement with the sectors as well. Um, in essence, this is a solar website. Um, you know, information, obviously, in terms of the, the access up here. If you want to type in SQA Solar into Google, it will be the first one that comes up in the search option. Um, as I was saying, essentially, centers have uh, particular guides to help them to be able to do things. And as I say, we've listed particular things to help them. You know, what is solar subjects available? How to get started? Scheduling? What can they do? So again, it's just the part of you know, prior delivery is something to be prepared for um, in terms of actually doing the online of available assessments. Um, this is information for centres in particular areas uh, and guidance to help them. The biggest part essentially is most centres want to see what is actually available in the test prior to actually delivering to a candidate. So the biggest thing is, again, as we explained to centres, that you have, you have the ability to create dummy candidates and run the tests prior to actually to doing so. Again, as I said, the about solar information lists in terms of what solar is, the benefits of doing so. As I explained before, we're detailing exactly information now related to flash delivery and HTML delivery and the differences between those particular things just now. Those will change and develop as things go on as well. Essentially, basics of the system. So. Uh, the system is not currently web service, so you are duplicating some information in terms of certification and in terms of registration of candidates. And again, all the explanations of information for particular things in terms of what you do for particular delivery. Again, scheduling a test can be different in terms of device to actually delivery. So again, there's explanations of the detail for that. Again, the device types we've listed here and particular information. We're also saying to you as contact us if you're actually struggling, we will try and help you as much as possible in terms of that delivery. But again, we're trying to specify particular things now rather than actually saying every device will work with this. So as I was going to quickly show you before in terms of the search, so essentially, if you're looking for information of what's actually available in the system, we now have a far better search option. Uh, it is no longer a clunky filtering system. It is capable of searching by either the subject name, the test name, or if you have the unit code, you can put that in as well. So I'll we'll just quickly put this one in just to show you. So in essence, that's personal finance. That's all that's listed there. Essentially, we're not saying there's actually, you know, five or six of these. Solar has the ability to actually provide, if a test is uh, six sections, we can break those down into individual sections, either for initial delivery or for reassessment. So if a candidate's got six sections, they've only failed one, they can reset that one section rather than having to reset the full test again. So uh, in terms of the site itself, as I said, we've got training materials for both centers and candidates. 
So again, you can check that information out there. Anything you have any issues with, there is a help desk form, which essentially you can break down into you know, particular uh, inquiry types. If you're looking for you know, creating candidates on the system, a candidate can go to a college and have a, a record on solar, which was created when they were at school. So essentially that record is already there. So you can't recreate again under the same information. So you're going to have to ask for a candidate transfer. So again, we've got all multiple areas that somebody can request information on those particular things. Okay. In terms of progression, um, we're moving towards uh, a range of new item types, and that's the benefit of being on HTML. So again, that's the part about you know being able to actually deliver across a multitude of devices. But again, we're specifying what those are, how to deliver them, and again, saying to centres, do a little bit of preparation, check how that actually delivers for your candidates prior to actually giving them it cold on the day. And again, maintenance and review uh, of those devices as well. So in terms of the item types themselves, um, the new ones that are coming out for us are things like the, the pick list, which is essentially selection from a list. Uh, a really, really good uh, new feature is going to be what's called the diagram tool. And that has a multitude of uh, options available for us to be able to create a wide range of questions and also in terms of interactions for candidates. So essentially we can pre-prepare part of those questions uh, and then allow the candidate to actually finish those off or ask them to create it from scratch. And the great part about that is it's actually in the system, it's interactive for both the candidate and the marker. Now, on the whole, they will probably be most likely human marked for all of these elements, uh, because essentially there will be you know, judgment areas on that, but it is a wide range of options for candidates to be able to actually interact with the system and for the, you know, the, the tutor or teacher to be able to interact with their marking elements as well. Okay. The other areas that we're working on in terms of future development are online proctoring. That's in its final stages of a business case. And essentially all centers should actually contact their business development uh, contacts to say that they're actually interested in this particular area um, to get them on the list, hopefully for dealing with that. The biggest thing we're going to say is we do not envisage that we were going to be able to say 500 centers can literally do online proctoring at the one time. It will probably be a more managed uh, element and there will also be a cost element uh, related to that. Although solar itself is actually a free service, the online proctoring will require that there will be a cost element for that. I'm afraid I don't have the details of that. As I said, the business case is still in its, its final elements, but essentially people should contact their business development uh, contacts for SQA to say that they're interested in this scheme. Can they get involved? Can they find out what the cost would actually be in terms of that? Okay. Apologies for a second. I have lost my script because it's on another screen. Okay. The other thing in terms of content for ourselves, what we actually provided on the system are obviously where uh, information is now listed for the new subjects. So we're going to detail where the HTML subjects are available, but what we'll also say where particular things are having to be split because unfortunately, even in particular subjects, we're still having to do a little bit of dual running. So a test may be able to be delivered on HTML. However, a computer-based project will still be on the flash at the current moment in time. We are working towards dealing with that. And again, within the next 12 months, that will be converted fully to HTML. And hopefully by that point, we will be able to say all content will be HTML, able to be delivered by HTML, and we will no longer require the viewer for delivery at all. Uh, it may be required for scheduling, but we hope again by that point it will be fully gone. There will be no flash elements required for any centers. It will purely be HTML browser delivery. Again, on the homepage, what we also were looking for was engagement with the sectors to say if SQA currently has an ASP, and essentially you would like this converted to solar that we would like to hear from you. We're not saying we will definitely be able to do it, but what we are saying is that we will definitely take on board your request to do so. We will review that information and hopefully be able to provide that back to you. So again, if you wanted to find out any information on that, uh, if you just double check this link here, it's telling you some of the information, the form that you actually do for the request of that, item types that are available. And again, we are extending this range as we go forward. 
it gives a little bit more information in terms of you know time scales details we will obviously do it as quickly as we possibly can we will get back to you you know immediately obviously to tell you we have received it but we will review that information and hopefully be able to provide that through solar going forwards the other element that we want to do uh, is essentially to engage with sectors and actually not just convert asps what we would like to do is to have sectors contact the qualifications teams and also in, in terms of dealing with the business managers um, to say that they want to get involved in creating content. Now, the best part about solar is the fact that it's actually capable of delivering that now. Previously, we only received the information from particular writers and input that into the system. We now have the capability of creating what are called tasks, and these can now be collective groups of writers. So it doesn't literally just have to be one person having to create everything and essentially be supervised by a lead author. Uh, they would probably have review by the uh, verifier for that subject and also the qualifications teams to do a collective review of that content for delivery into solar. And the good part about that is essentially it will actually allow you to see what you're creating more than anything else. So I'll just very quickly log into the system and show you the question types. To show you is these individual questions that you're actually writing. So the biggest part with that is, again, the verifier and the qualifications team will probably have to create the assessment specification, i.e. which rules and knowledge points are going to be used from units or whichever partner or outcome, depending on what's actually able to be done, because obviously the system lends itself less towards the practical applications and more towards knowledge points. But that doesn't mean to say that we definitely cannot do any practical whatsoever. Just to simply show you some of the options which are currently available, um, you have uh, essentially what's a survey item. Um, so I say if you wanted to actually not do a specific test, or even if you wanted to do a survey element at the end of a test or as part of a project or something else, you can actually create survey items. And those are just your standard matrix. So essentially, you would input the information here and you can, oops, thank you, Bernard. Uh, edit towards a single listing or matrix. And then once you have actually finished that, you can preview what you're actually looking for. If you give me a second. So essentially you can actually see what you've created and that can be done across the whole range of item types as well. So, as I said, that's the survey item type. Uh, you can have a bog standard multiple choice question. Um, and again, the biggest part with that is if any item requires any additional information, like an image or a source piece of material, those can all either be preloaded into the system or allow these authors the ability to actually add those if they want to do so. Again, the other thing we'd ask you to do, or we can preload are things like the knowledge points from the units. So those tags in terms of learning outcomes, unit information, keywords, subtopics, those can all be preloaded into the system if required, or an author can actually put those in as well. So again, this item type is actually audio capture. So again, you could list a particular piece of information, ask the candidate to repeat that back. Or again, you could add audio elements yourself that the candidate can listen to. You can uh, edit in terms of what the candidate actually interacts with. So you can restrict the number of attempts. You can you know, detail how long they've got for particular audio captures. So again, you can extend these out for particular things as well. The next item type is actually in terms of file upload and probably one of the elements in terms of actually for project rather than test uh, because of the interactive nature of that. So essentially what we're saying is we could either put templates into this question type and allow candidates to download those, interact with them and upload into the system, or you give candidates source material to say we want you to go away and create content 
and actually provide that back. And again, we're saying that you know you have a multitude of options. You can create you know of however number of files the candidate can actually upload in that particular item. You can you know specify the, the item types or sorry the, the the file types which the candidate can actually interact with. And what's not listed there is actually MP4 because we can actually uh, deliver up to a gig worth of you know, MP4 play as well. So there is the propensity now for candidates to actually provide video evidence of particular things, which again may lend itself obviously to more practical elements and be able to do that through projects. The benefit of a project as opposed to a test is that it can be over a period of time. It doesn't have to be a one setting delivery. So essentially we can create a project which can be up to you know, nine months, but it can actually be any specified time period. You could literally create a project for seven days and say to a candidate, I want you to create something you know, pretty quickly in terms of dealing with that. And again, the good part about that is any of the item types can actually be put into the projects as well. And again, obviously media can be added to that, source materials, anything at all. show the preview. So this in essence is actually a standard multiple response question, but it's given a little bit of a different graphic. Essentially now this is created in terms of a matrix option, so you can ask particular things in different ways. So it gives a benefit as well. This is a, a very, very standard question type, obviously true or false, yes or no. But the biggest part about that is you can actually edit this content. So you can literally list anything you want at all. The, the majority of people trying to create questions, if you want to try and create a standard multiple choice question, you have to come up with essentially one correct answer and three wrong answers. Sometimes that's not always possible. So essentially, if you've only got one which could be comparable to the actual answer, this provides an option of you being able to do that element as well. So it gives a little bit of flexibility on even the simplest type of question. Okay, this is a numerical uh, and in essence, I've obviously done a very, very simplified aspect of that, but you can make it as complex as you want. And again, you can actually add elements in terms of formulas so that the author has a propensity to add a whole host of information, either with the source material, just close that down again, excuse me. And also in terms of adding elements, if you wanted to add you know, particular symbols and all the rest of that, you're capable of doing so as well. So you could literally create complex formulas and details for the candidate to interact with. The benefits of this type of art is that, uh, it is an absolute answer. So this lends itself to being computer marked. Uh, and that's the good part about that. And again, you can vary. What we would also be doing more than anything else is explaining to authors, if a candidate is to provide an answer in a particular way, I've listed this as a numeric, a candidate may actually provide an answer in text. So it's again, specifying in your instructions in the question so that you tailor it to the answers that have been provided in the system and that can avoid issues. In essence, uh, this is essentially what we call a, a short answer or providing the answer. Uh, and in this area, what I've done is I've actually selected a paragraph of text, and then I've selected the particular areas that we want the candidate to actually uh, provide. So when you actually see it on screen, those areas have actually been removed. So in essence, you could do that across a, a wide range uh, of information and get the candidate to provide that. The one thing with this element in direct opposite to a numeric is this is not an absolute because the biggest part of that is a spelling aspect. You cannot provide a system with every single option in terms of spelling. So essentially we would have to push this back to human marking to allow centers to be able to deal with that. And the one thing that we are trying to provide in the system is the ability for remarking. So we're now providing documentation uh, in terms of the processes for that. And we will allow centers uh, in the future to actually remark content which is in solar. Biggest part is centers are obviously far more trustworthy than, than the people give them credit for. They're going to do the necessities, not silly things. But the, again, the bigger part of that is the system is going to record all of the actions taken. And again, centers have to request scripts to be re-accessible 
by the centres to do this remarking. So we're going to know which particular areas they're actually dealing with, what the reasoning is behind it, and what they're going to do. So as I said, it's all detailed in the system. So if there were any issues whatsoever, a verifier or anybody else could review the system to understand what has actually been done by a particular user for those particular areas. And again, it will help to shape us because we will actually be able to see if there are issues like this type of thing. Something, you know, a question may have been set as computer marked, but there are actually more variables than you know you would normally allow if something can be detailed as a slang terminology and that's actually acceptable as an answer. So again, we're not possibly able to provide every answer option as a, an absolute listed area. So again, we could push a computer marked item back to human marking and that will help to shape us. This is a very standard essay option. Uh, again, the biggest thing is the fact that uh, candidates can take word count. They've got the ability to you know, undo, redo. Uh, they can do bullet points, bold, basically standard options in terms of essay provision. What we are expecting in the future is the ability to actually be able to shape this a little bit better so we can actually provide more tailored so almost like you know sentences or paragraph elements as opposed to just one large block. So again, we could have the ability to do multiple parts. So an A, you know, A, B, C, uh, D type of question, rather than having to put this whole section in every single time, we will be able to tailor this a little bit more down to smaller sections. Uh, this is your matching question. So again, as we, uh, I was talking about before, for candidates, we're actually providing instructions on how these types of questions work, because the biggest thing is a candidate can obviously do the selections and then suddenly think, I actually want to get rid of these. So we're giving instructions on what you need to do. Now, the HTML version has a very handy part of it in terms of cutting it, but you can also select and that will appear and then you can remove your option. So it's trying to explain those elements to candidates prior to the test as much as possible so they're not having to experience that in the middle of their test during a timed element. Okay, uh, this is the drag and drop option. So again, what I've done here is put a simple thing in terms of about instructions, saying please put these instructions in the correct order. You could obviously put this across a range of areas in terms of things, um, you know, elements uh, or, you know, instructions for doing something, uh, the steps required for something, anything at all. And the biggest part is, again, it's now able to be completely scrollable. And all of these items are able to be used through all the devices that we talked about before. So essentially, it's not just laptop and PC now. This is able to be used across tablets. This is able to be used in iPads. This is able to be used in Chromebooks. They've all been tested. They've all been checked. They're all able to be delivered. And last item type is actually hotspot. So again, what you could do is provide, uh, you know, Again, what I've done here is select the point where 42 magazines were sold. Anything at all, any image that we could input into the system and highlight or require a candidate to highlight particular things, you can actually set that up. And again, as I said, all these things can be preloaded in terms of images or the author can go away and find an image, review that and put it into the system. What we would obviously do is be providing authors with detail, obviously, in terms of copyright and things like that. Uh, and in April, and to enable all authors to be able to use the system far better, the SQ Academy, which is our online learning course, uh, has a course on item authoring. And anybody essentially can request the uh, key code, or I can't remember what they call them. There is a code to access those particular courses. To get access to that, review the content there and be able to see all these things that we were talking about in terms of engaging with the system, how to use these particular things, helpful hints and tips, and actually be able to provide that evidence back to them. So what would happen is uh, if a, a group of authors wanted to uh, uh, put content into the system, they would, as I said, get in contact with the qualifications team, get their engagement with doing that, they would be able to be set up as a group, collective group on the system. It would all be reviewed, it would all be checked, and then essentially that could actually be you know, delivered nationally. 
That sounds like a an amazing update from since I from when I last saw the solar platform. Um, there's a lot of really encouraging stuff there. Unfortunately, we're we're just running out of time. Just yes. now, Derek. <laughs> As always, I, I was getting carried away, and I I, I stopped watching <laughs> the clock. Um, but there there there's so much there. Can can you just briefly describe um what the future developments are? Then it's nice progression. You're moving away from the flash, getting rid of those legacy elements. Looking forward, what what most excites you? Essentially, the the, the new item areas as well. It's allowing us the scope and the ability to actually move into other areas that we would have been you know less capable of doing before. I um, mean, even the fact of, you know, sciences, this diagram tool will literally allow you to, you know, input, you know, uh, chain molecules and the candidate has the capability to freehand or do line graph or even, you know, to put Im images and tag those in terms of, you know, literally full interaction on screen to be able to do that. There's layering uh, in that option as well. So there are a whole host of areas where question you know, capabilities are opened up to us. And again, as I said, that SE uh, option is now going to be more interactive in terms of dealing with that, the pick from list. Um, it's just simply a case of, you know, where we were slightly more restricted in terms of item options, that opens up avenues for us to be actually able to deliver that. And the biggest thing, again, as we've said, is that because it's all browser, it's moving to be able to be allowed to be delivered across a multitude of devices. Again, it's taking away the restrictions for so many people, but we are seeing within these boundaries, within these things, please be prepared before you, you know, go to deliver with candidates, check what's being done. We will obviously provide as much information as possible. Again, the list of available assessments will talk about the delivery of options which are available. We will try and highlight, you know, uh, again, as we said, the good practice tips. If you're using a tablet, make sure the screen's cleaned. If it's really important in terms of dealing with that, you know, if there's a text box, is, typing on a tablet is going to be completely different as it would be typing on a keyboard. So again, pre-checking that, giving instructions to candidates, reviewing what you're actually doing will be very, very important. That sounds great. And ob obviously with the platform, you've got the opportunity to introduce formative aspect uh, assessment, which gives students the chance to practice on that interface if before they obviously attempt the, the yes. summative aspect. So, you know, there's a, there's a lot there. Some of the colleges, so for example, um, Dundee and Angus, I don't know, Jan, it, it, Jen, you could be from Dundee and Angus. I know a Jen from yes. Dundee and Angus. Um, but yes. Dundee and Angus is, is moved away from its kind of traditional BLE. It is you, Jen. Yes. Oh, you should so Hello, Jen. So, so we, here, here, here's a perfect option. So Dundee and Angus has moved from Moodle, essentially, to mostly to um, Teams delivery, So, which a number of, of colleges are looking at potentially doing. And, and yet Teams is not very well set up when it comes to assessment. Um, as we know, it, it, it relies on, you know, things like forms or third party tools. But I, I wonder, you know, is there a place potentially for something like solar to oh. fill that gap? And Jan is going to have an opinion about this. I can I can see I can I can tell. <laughs> Shall I speak? Please, oh, please do. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hi, Derek. Um, many apologies. I was in meetings all morning and then I saw your email and I was like, this is what I want to speak about. This is this is me. This is me. So, yeah, as Kenji said, we've taken the bold step. We're moving from Moodle um, and over next session and the session after all would be on Teams. Um, so, yeah, there is forms and quizzes, but it's quite limited. And I've already, I'm just trying to um, get back to one of my science tutors today. They're saying, you know, in my learning, we could do this and we could do that. We could do this. So I've been looking at a few tools. I've looking at quizzes and that's just not appropriate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I keep saying, Solar can do that. Solar can do that. But there's been a few hiccups over the years, as you've um, mentioned, Derek, you know, people saying, I don't like what it is. But if we have the input of this is what we would really like and work with you, you know, it can be used over the sector. And I see all the positive points. But when, you know, it's like every like um, TripAdvisor, if somebody puts a bad review, that's it. But I love Solar and I think it's yeah. great. You know, so I keep saying, why don't we do that? Why don't we use this? Because, you know, I said, oh, can maybe look at question mark perception? That's a huge cost, you know, mm. and does it do what we want? So if the whole sector's using Solar and we can promote it and manage it well, and you know, have the process in place, and we're looking at that. And 
you know, I have various thoughts on everything, as you know, but the main thing is to use a tool that's robust, that does, we're not going to get 100% of what Moodle did, but we're going to get a lot of things like yeah. it. And a lot of staff, you know, the thing that um, I was just reading the email that this, this tutor saying, my learning allowed us to have randomized assessments, limit the number of questions per page, allowed us to develop different types of questions, essay style, multiple choice, yeah. drop down. That's all solid. Is there a possibility of having to teach and assess remotely next year? We would like something that's as close to closed book as possible. Solar, yep. you know, so I'm going to, um, when the video is available on YouTube, I'll watch it and share it with everybody um, to say, look, this is what I've been saying. So I think... Unfortunately, we don't have more time to discuss it. So we will carry on the conversation here in the room. Um, but for those of you joining us in YouTube land, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, that's the end of the session for today. Thanks so much for Derek and everyone here contributing. Um, but until we see you next time, stay safe.